God invites us to his table, and on his table he gives us bread and wine. Bread is food that sustains the heart. It's food that gives us life and strength and enables us to act powerfully throughout the day. It's this food that you start the day with. Maybe for you it's your toast in the morning that you have with your breakfast, or some other form of basic food that gives you the strength to do your labor. At the end of the day, we celebrate with wine. Wine is a drink that we use to give us rest, to relax us, to give us a sense of peace as we wind down after a busy day's work. Now in the supper, in the celebration of communion, those two things come together. We have the alpha food, bread, and we have the omega food, wine. God gives us the food that we begin our labors with, and he gives us the drink that we end our labors with. And those two aspects of communion, I think, help us to understand something of what's going on and how it has relationship to our work more generally. Our week begins on Sunday. Sunday comes before six days of labor. And as we are propelled out onto the week, we are given bread. Bread to enable us to act with strength. Strength that is found in Christ, in his gift of his body the gift by which we can act, and the gift by which we can exercise our strength as his limbs and organs. We are given Christ's body so that we might act as Christ's body. As we gather together to celebrate communion, we're also looking back on a week. We're looking back and enjoying rest after completed labors. But yet, there's something more than that. It's not just looking back that we drink wine, it's looking forward. We begin the week with rest. Our work is built on the basis of a completed work. Our work is built in anticipation and in enjoyment ahead of time of something that we are looking forward to in the future. We see this in the Old Testament. Melchizedek, after Abraham's victory over the kings, brought bread and wine to celebrate a feast in the land that Abraham had not yet inherited. We see it in the story of the Exodus, as grapes from the land, grapes from Eshcol, were brought to Israel to taste in the wilderness. And in the same way, we have an anticipation of the final end of our work, given to us on the basis of Christ's completed work. He has completed his work, and so even before our work has begun, we can go out and enjoy wine, the fruit of what has been completed. That confidence in a completed work allows us to go out with joy, to go out as those who have been assured of the fruit of their labors. We are allowed to taste of what we will have in the final supper, the supper that brings an end to all works, the supper that is that great wedding feast of the Lamb, a banquet that will be set in which we will enjoy the true fruits of all the labors on earth, fruits that we can share at this moment in time, fruits that give us a sense of the end of our labors while giving us rest within them.